Okay, so this is the track going to the western side. Oh, bugger. She's down right to the axles. Looking like we're not getting to our camp spot. Before we get into this episode, I want to let you know about a giveaway we're having this week. So my mate Michael from Image Property, who you actually see in this episode with me, uh, he has donated a family pass to Camp Free Cure, which is in only three weeks time. Uh, now on top of that, he's also donated a $150 fuel gift card and a $150 BCF gift card just to help out the winner to uh, get some more camping gear and uh, the fuel to help him get to the event. We are also going to chuck in two Camp for a Cure t-shirts and that brings the total prize to over $500 value. All you got to do to be in the running is watch this video, look for the code word and comment it below. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this one where we explore the beautiful, beautiful west coast of Gari. Welcome back to another episode everyone. Hey, I am on Warralee Road, the central track going from the eastern to the western side of Gari, aka Fraser Island. So, spent the last couple of days doing the eastern side, head back to the last video, see uh, what we got up to there, and um, figure out why I'm here without Erin and the kids. Anyway, so this is the track going to the western side. As I said, we're gonna camp there for the next few days. So pretty rough conditions on this track already. Uh, even just the very first little bit, the timber boards that normally help uh, the track are just all torn up and terrible. But um, we'll keep going along. We'll see how this is. I've never been this way before. So it's all brand new for me, but I cannot wait to get over that western side of the island and um, get the tinnies in. That's really why we're going over there. All right, so this track, it's like I said, it's a little bit rough at the start. Going down there, fellas, anything going on? Yeah, good wheel. Yeah, I'm gonna rip Mick through. So Mick got stuck at the very front there. Uh, you just can't get around that first corner with all the timber blocking the way and the, um, the camper trailer on. So we've hooked him up. I don't think you'll need much, just a light pull through there. All right, you ready, mate? Stop. <laughs> oh, bugger. I'll try to do a little snatch, Mick. Yep. If we go reverse back at the same time, I should be able to get out. Copy. Ready to go again? Yep. Nah, man, I'm just gonna bury myself here. Yeah, same. What are you thinking? Go a bit further back. Old mate's just put his tracks down and we'll give it some more berries, mate. Do you want to do the longest trap? Do you have it? Yeah, I got a big purple one. Yeah, let's do that. Like we said, we're just gonna go for the longest strap now. Uh, that snatchy I've got's really short. I went from having the world's longest one to the world's shortest one. Now. Nah, I'm going for a longer snatchy, mate. Um, we kept getting stuck. You good, mate? Ready to give it berries when you are. Ah. 
Uh, bounce the way through it. <laughs> Wow, it's hard to do. All right, let's get back on the road, get over to this west side. Well, you wouldn't even think it, but this little section of the inland track is actually pretty soft. It looks fine, but James has just gone down with the boat and Michael has with the camper. So I'm just gonna, yeah, gonna go back now, mate. Just gonna ease it. Yeah, it won't take much. Just gonna ease him back, cause once again, going backwards. Gotta be careful, cause I'm backing the. No. I have to give you a bit of a yank, mate. Yeah, we left real early to get over to the western side, but at this rate, I think we're going to be getting there pretty late. <laughs> ah, well, like I keep saying, it's all part of it. Oh, I'm stuck again. She's down right to the axles. I tell you what, thank God for having the Y62 with us because it's come to the rescue again. Proper bog, mate. Yeah, she's proper. Yeah, you're good. Do you want some tracks? I might need some. Yeah, right up. Yep. Stop. We're going for three statues connected together now because Clado's on the hard ground up there. It just keeps bogging down here. It's horrible. Yes. <laughs> oh, thank God for that. Now I've got to find these tracks. Oh, let's go again. <laughs> uh, all right, hopefully we don't get stuck, Link. We're good. We're good. I haven't sweat this much in a long time, eh? <laughs> Love coming through here and seeing the change of scenery. You just go from typical sort of east coast look to this luscious rainforest. It's incredible, it just happens like that too. West side of the island guys first time I've been to this particular part and um, just as a greeting mother nature has swung the wind around <laughs> and is blowing a westerly <laughs> normally that is apparently just glassy really calm but you know you can't pick it well you can if you check the weather but um, yeah not for us so that was meant to be also a two-hour journey from pretty much camp over to here it took us something like five hours <laughs> with all the boggings and just slow going. But anyway, we're here now. Anyway, a little bit of a creek crossing here. Looks like you'd normally drive down here, but um, the tide's too high at the moment. So we cruise around, get on this little back track. Plato's just driven down there. It's not looking too promising to be honest. It's 
fresh water at least, so no dramas crossing it. Oh, beautiful tech. Did you actually make it through, or are you still looking for a spot to get back on the beach? Uh, definitely true. I'm just staying on a track in behind the dunes, because when the tide comes up, it's Yeah, what is the tide? Is it, we're still coming up the high? Yeah, look, we, we know for on the eastern side, but it's very different over here. So the verdict right now is looking like we're not getting to our camp spot. We can't cross the creek down there, it's way too deep. Two cars don't have snorkels here. And we can't go up and around because the tide's too high and there's not enough beach up there. We, three of us probably could, but Michael with the camper, it's just after seeing it getting bogged today, it's just not gonna make it. So, we're gonna figure out what we're gonna do. So Clado's just unhooked the boat and he's taken Mick around there just for a drive to see if Mick's confident to take the camper. Might, we might be just giving it a crack. Don't know. So we'll sit here. How's <laughs> the noise that's making now? <laughs> We're just gonna hang tight, um, have something to eat because it's two o'clock and we haven't eaten yet. us Kugel Creek I think it's Kugel Creek nice big open camping areas we got the ocean on that side she's rough at the moment blowing in but we're a little bit protected back here we're gonna park the cars along and we drop down into this side and that's our creek how good is that got a boat ramp obviously gonna have to wait for the tide to come back in oh it's nice too it does get deeper down the other end, but because we got here so late from mucking around so much, it's um, pretty full down there. But I reckon I've earned a beer after all that. up having an early night last night after such a big day and sleeping really good in that swag too I was a little bit concerned with the mattress and how it would go if I'd be comfortable but it's been really good um, it's still windy but that's okay the tides in so we're gonna have a coffee make some brekkie and get out there in the boat straight away launch them into the creek behind us and then we'll just have a play around, see if we can get out in the ocean, but it is rough. We'll see what happens. Tinny's in. Have a look at this water, would ya? This spot is just incredible. So I've got Zaki in the boat here. We're just gonna go for a burn up uh, Kungal Creek. See how far we can go. We're not sure. We saw a little tinny out here this morning with pots, but um, not sure how far up they go. So we're just gonna go have a look. It's amazing how protected it is here when it's blowing its guts out just over there. Quite shallow though. We're only sitting there. 800. Oh yeah, so I haven't shown you that either. So I set up the sander. This thing came with the boat. So I've had it sitting there the whole time. It's just a Garmin down view. And then I've just got it running off the Compact 600. I just put an Anderson plug onto the uh, power for the, the um, finder. 
just run it off that. It's using some bugger all power. Good. So I can take the battery out. Don't have to worry about leaving something permanently set up in here. And then I can just charge all other stuff off that too. Phones, whatnot. goes heats further up than I thought, eh? Hey? But we've ended up getting, um, it's real shallow, so <laughs> you have to be real careful up here because the tide rips in and out that quickly at the moment that this, um, we empty in no time. Right, I want to show you how good this spot is. Obviously, when it's not windy, it'll be absolutely amazing, but check out that, that beach. It's roaring in. It's not calm at all. <laughs> But, come on over to the other side, and because you drop down the dune into it, it's just so calm over here. Look at that. <laughs> the wind's gone. So we're just hanging out over here, having a few beers around the boats, waiting for that tide to come back in. And then we'll head up that creek, because we left it too late today, so we couldn't hang up there. The water was just rushing out too quick. So we'll wait for that tide to start coming back in, and we'll go have a fish up there. Plato's just going to throw his cast net out, see if we can get a bit of bait for the crab traps. Uh, by our little cruise up there this morning, it doesn't look like we're going to get any crabs, but got to have a go. Show us that, Dorbs. Did he get that in the cast net? Yeah, there was another one. There was two, but one of them went out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes! Is this a survival? It is a survival mission. <laughs> because we will survive. Yeah, without this. <laughs> We've just been running around spotting the whiting and getting Clayton to throw the net at them. We might not catch anything on our um, rods later, but getting them in the cast net. There you go. That's not what you want in your cast net. You got half a tree too. There, there you he goes. See you, mate. Getting the bait out. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna cook something a little bit tasty today, guys. Got this Wagyu steak, 12 plus Wagyu. Honestly don't know what 12 plus means. So I better get on to Billy and ask him what the go is there. But have a look at it. That looks awesome. I'm gonna start off first though. It's gonna be real simple. Gonna cut up this onion, red onion. Chuck it in a bit of vinegar pickle it. Don't need heaps so I can be pretty sparing with this. And chuck it straight in the bin because we don't want dingoes hanging around. Bit of white vinegar that I brought from home and a dirty old Gatorade bottle. We'll chuck that to the side. So we're just gonna take this beautiful bit of Wagyu steak and slice it up real fine. You might see I'm using my dirty old filleting knife. Gave it a little bit of a clean, but I um, wanna get a good set of knives, but I don't know what to get. We always struggle with knives, we never have good ones. So drop in the comments, let me know good knife sets for cooking that we can keep sharpening because we will blunten them all the time. All right, gonna season that up with this stuff here. I've never seen this before. Limited release 
fiery hot taco mix. So I came on this trip prepared to cook everything on the induction cooker, running it off the battery system. But uh, day two, it decided wasn't gonna play the game. Packed it in, won't turn on, won't do anything. So there's only one thing for it. Can't leave that there. Luckily though, I did buy myself a little butane gas cooker because I don't have an induction ke uh, kettle. So to do my coffees in the morning, I was using this thing. Now, I'm cooking everything on it. All right, I'm gonna fire this up. We'll give this Wagyu, oh yeah, a real quick fry up. My God, that smells so good. Rip that off into a bowl. Now I'm just gonna chuck a few of these taco tortillas in. There we go. Do a couple of them at a time. Don't need to do them much, just heat them up. All right, all we're gonna do now is grab our tacos. A little bit of Wagyu beef. We're just chuck on some shredded cheese. And now we're just gonna bang that in the travel oven. Oh, full heat. I think they get up to about 180. Let that cheese melt. Whew, I'm hungry. All right, that's long enough for my liking. All right. Bit of pickled onion on each of those tacos. Whew. Wow. Come on, Clayton. Jesus Christ. Look at that. Get amongst it. Flash of the rat. Yep. Grab one, get into it. What are we? Wagyu tacos. Hot. What we are. Gotta be careful holding this beer, it's full of water. Yum. Mm. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> that's unreal. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Join us next week to find out what Mother Nature had in store for us and to see how we go with the fishing and crabbing. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.